Hello friends, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, it's my honor to welcome you. We are so glad that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today. And if it is your first time to worship with us, we are particularly pleased that you are here. And I want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is in the comments and there's a QR code on your screen. Please go ahead and log into that. Let us know who you are how we can get in touch with you because we want to be able to connect with you be able to get the e-newsletter to you that has all of the information about ways to connect and be a part of the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church there's also a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team so we hope that everyone will use that contact form today now we are celebrating communion for all people today so if you have not already done so I encourage you to get some bread or a baked good or some crackers of some kind and then some juice or some kind of a beverage so that you can join in that time of Holy Communion everyone is welcome so please do gather up those uh, different kinds of resources so that you can have them with us with you and then I invite you to join with us in our covenant to participate and to bless now what that means is that we promise that we're going to participate in what it is that we're doing today in worship so we encourage you to turn off other devices and other distractions to really focus in on what we're doing when it's time to pray pray when it's time to sing stand up and sing really get into the worship together that's our covenant to participate and then we covenant to be a blessing and that means that all of the ways that we are together and the way we're in the comment section the way that we're with people we may be gathered with right now to worship the way that we're sending all of this out into the world that all of it is going to be a blessing for everyone who is involved and everyone who comes in contact with it so thanks for joining with us in that and again thank you for being here for worship The story of Jesus includes many moments around tables, sharing meals, as this was part of his ritual of relationship even to the last. In this fifth week of the Lent season, we will hear a story of love and devotion from the disciple Mary, directed at Jesus at the table. As we will see, Jesus tries to prepare his beloved companions for his death. Talk of death is like a gut punch to many of us. We would rather believe we and our beloved ones are invincible and are able to will ourselves into being strong. We all know that this isn't always how the story goes. We are fragile. Our lives, like the plants in the gardens we tend, are susceptible to the elemental dangers and a life cycle of letting go in order to live. do we dream about for tomorrow void of sorrow time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays mistakes we made sometimes we get what we get life disappoints us and yet God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow, time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us, and yet, God is still here, and somehow this faith is good enough. I'm Nancy Gillespie, and I'm a longtime member here at Douglas Church. 
please join me in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, lover of souls, we call out to you. You know our tears and sorrows, and you bear the seeds of grief with us. Open us this day to your comfort that nurtures these seeds into sheaves of joy, the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Please join us in At the Cross, Love Ran Red.
Good morning. I'm Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years, and I'm a member of the Finance Committee and the Welcome and Inclusion Team. Jesus speaks the words no one wanted to admit. He was not always going to be around. Oh, don't say that, so many of us have said to a loved one who speaks about the truth of the fragility of life. Perhaps we get uncomfortable because it reveals the precious nature of the present moment, laying bare the beauty and horror of it all. The indescribable pain we know we will one day face invades our senses like a pervasive perfume, inescapable. What if we stopped denying the limited nature of our lives and breathed in deeply the fragrance of vulnerability? Let us take a moment of silence, offering to God our reflections and our confessions. Hear this compassionate word from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the need to avoid suffering at the cost of denying the fullness of life. We are invited into the knowledge that Christ's vulnerability in life, death, and resurrection shows us the sacred nature of the heights and depths of sorrow and joy in our own saga. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. With this assurance of Jesus' love and forgiveness, let's share that joy and peace with one another. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments. Share that with whomever you might be gathered with for worship. And please share that with me. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Abby Klein, and this is Christian. Peace be with you. Hi, I am Molly Barrett. I have been a member of Douglas Avenue for over 10 years now, along with my husband, Rex Gradeless. We are in the Young Adult Sunday School class. I also am on the SPRC committee, and I am the founder of Compass for Kids. Peace be with you. Hi, we're Randy and Sue Burge. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hooray, it's time for Small Talk. I want to encourage all the children to come in really close to your device and your screen so you can see and hear absolutely everything that's going on with Small Talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So get ready, everybody. It is now time for Small Talk. Hello, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> we have some eggs today. Careful, Laud. They're very fragile. I think we all know that, right? Eggs are like super fragile. Yeah, they're really fragile. Let's see, did any of those break? I thought I heard a crack. Hmm. This one cracked a little bit. Here, let's see. Yep. They make a big mess, too. If you drop them. Yeah. They're so fragile. I didn't know you had an egg. Yeah. They're really fragile. They're kind of like us a little bit. But think about this a minute. So these eggs, chickens sit on them, ducks, geese, and they don't crack. They turn into little tiny chickens, little chicks. And the eggs don't crack then. This one is cracked from my mistake. Let me find one that's not cracked. 
So if I do this really, really hard, it doesn't crack. Cohen's gonna do it too. He's stronger than I am already. He's stronger. Oh, I think it's gonna crack. You think? He's stronger than I am. <laughs> now, uh, I had dropped these eggs. <laughs> I, I thought that was supposed to work. So, yeah, I think you got one of them that got cracked a little bit when I dropped them. Anyway, they're like us. But these have been designed by God. Sorry about that. You'll, we'll clean that up in a minute. Designed by God so that they can withstand okay, a lot yeah. of things. No. We're having quite a situation no, here right now with dogs and cats and broken eggs. <laughs> but it going. But these you don't want to eat that, man. are really strong, believe it or not. And they've been designed by God for that to withstand a lot of pressure. Right. Yeah. So think about that. Every time you crack an egg, it's really strong and it was designed by God. And it's like us. We're really strong. Mm -hmm. He's really strong. Mm -hmm. And we were designed by God to be that way. Doesn't mean we don't crack sometimes and that life's not hard, but we're made to withstand lots of things by God. So have a great day. We have oh, a lot to clean up here. The dog is licking the egg off the floor. Have a great day, guys. Yeah. Bye. Clean up. Please join us as we sing Ferris Lord Jesus. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I am proud to call Douglas Avenue my home church. I would now like to read to you this morning's scripture. Our reading from the Bible is from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Let us open our hearts and our minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading today. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them dry with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of that perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one that was about to betray him, said, Why was the perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money not given to the poor? He said this not because he had cared for the poor, 
but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used it to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading that we have received today. Amen. I'm going to start our message with a small warning today. This is a harder, sadder Bible passage than we often share together in worship. We're going to talk about some difficult things like grief and death and loss today. These are real things in our lives, part of what it means to be real human beings in a real world. Kate Bowler, the writer of our Good Enough devotion book that we are following during the season of Lent, she often reminds us, there is no cure for being human. We are fragile and we are finite. This is our reality and we're going to talk about that today, so I just wanted to give you a heads up. Now, I'm basically a really happy person. I tend to be optimistic and positive. In fact, positivity is my highest strength in the personal strengths assessment tool, Strength Finders. But our reading from the Bible today has asked me, asked us, to pause, think about, and hold loss. So we're going to do that. The heart of our Bible story is when Mary anoints Jesus' feet with expensive perfume. This is a deeply personal, intimate act that's usually reserved for a close family member when they prepare a loved one's body after death and before burial. It was a shocking thing to do at a dinner party. Mary's sister, Martha, and her brother, Lazarus, and the disciples must have all been incredibly uncomfortable at this action, to say the least. Jesus, however, doesn't let their feelings of discomfort and dis-ease off the hook. When he's asked to rebuke her, to reclaim a comfortable, more normal social atmosphere, Jesus says, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Wow, how uncomfortable they must have all been for Jesus to lean into the ominous and morbid idea that he was being anointed for his burial. This was a dinner party after all, and here was Jesus insisting on reminding them all that he was going to die. You do not always have me. At this point in Jesus' life, his teachings, travels, and trajectory, well, his meaning was absolutely unmistakable. He wanted them to understand that he knew his death wasn't a far-off possibility, but a real and imminent future. In this moment, Jesus invites his friends and followers to acknowledge their coming grief at his death. Acknowledging loss and grief, it's hard. I think we human beings generally don't like to do it. Even during our season of Lent, when we spend 40 days retelling the stories of Jesus, it's still an easy temptation to gloss over the fear, the loss, the grief of Jesus' death by jumping over the pain of Jesus' rejection, torture, and crucifixion on Good Friday to the victory of Easter. But Mary's anointing of Jesus pulls us back and asks us to sojourn with our losses and grief for a while. Psychologists know that acknowledging and living in loss and grief is important in setting the stage for healing and hope. Grief is a powerful emotion that can rock a person's heart, and the process of grieving can last a lifetime. Dr. Mary Frances O'Connor, professor of psychology at University of Arizona and author of The Grieving Brain, describes the process of grief and grieving this way. Grief is that emotional state that just knocks you off your feet and comes over you like a wave. 
Grieving necessarily has a time component to it. Grieving is what happens as we adapt to the fact that our loved one is gone, that we're carrying the absence of them with us. And the reason that this distinction makes sense is grief is a natural response to loss. So we'll feel grief forever. A woman who lost her mother as a young person is going to experience that grief on her wedding day because it's a new moment where she's having a response to loss. But grieving means that our relationship to that grief changes over time. So the first time, maybe even the first 100 times, you're knocked off your feet with grief. It feels terrible and awful and unfamiliar. But maybe the 101st time you think to yourself, I hate this, I don't want this to be true, but I do recognize it, and I do know that I will get through the wave. Sometimes I think we Christians are particularly bad at acknowledging our grief, that we don't allow ourselves to continue grieving, that when we feel grief, we're ashamed that our Faith isn't strong enough to envision the promises of Jesus about his victory over death. We might say, I shouldn't be sad there in heaven. Or we might think, if I really trusted God, I wouldn't be lonely and missing them now, even now. Let me say this very clearly so that you hear it very clearly. God created us all to love. And so we are also created to deeply feel loss. Your grief is not faithlessness. Your grief is because God has gifted you with love. Feel your feelings, mourn your losses. For this is how God has made you, made all of us. Take comfort in the promise of heaven for sure, but don't feel ashamed for your loss. And your loneliness. Even Jesus wept over the death of a friend. In John chapter 11 verse 34, we hear of how Jesus grieved when he learned about the death of his friend Lazarus. When Mary and Martha tell him that their brother Lazarus is dead, Jesus weeps. Even knowing that he is planning on raising Lazarus from the dead, bringing him back to life to sit at the very same dinner party where Mary anoints Jesus for burial. Even with that knowledge, Jesus still mourns for Lazarus. If Jesus weeps for Lazarus, we can surely mourn those whom we love. I think Judas points out another way that Christians tend to ignore grief and grieving. Judas chastises Mary in our Bible story for using such expensive perfume for something so seemingly wasteful, as if grief is a luxury. Christians are great ones for saying, I don't have time to be sad, there's too much work to be done. Or, I just need to keep working because that's what they would have wanted me to do. We all see the needs of others around us and we're great at throwing ourselves into helping others, sometimes as a way to avoid our feelings. And so Jesus reminds us, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This isn't a proclamation about the uselessness of trying to eliminate poverty. No. Jesus is hitting us with some truth-telling that doing good for others won't eliminate our need to take time for grieving. There will always be more to do for God's ministries in the world, but we must still take the time to grieve. As Christians, we have such a great good news that dawns with Easter morning. The amazing news that with God's resurrection of Jesus, death is no longer the end of our human story. The miracle that death and loss and decay are not the final fate for the living, but that in Jesus Christ we are given the gracious gift of eternal life with God, that death is defeated and life is the victor forever. However, with this amazing news, it can be attempting to try to brush aside our feelings of loss and our grieving. We can surround ourselves with a shroud of toxic positivity or a rush 
toward Easter in all of its times and all of its places. Mary and Jesus today remind us to avoid this temptation. In order for Easter to transform our mourning into dancing, we need to acknowledge and live with our losses and our mourning. To take the time to know and feel that we have loved and lost. To name our sadness and feel our love. And to offer them to God's promises of resurrection and transformation. Our journey to the joy of Easter runs through our very real sadness. We'll get there, I promise. But there are no shortcuts to the empty tomb that avoid the reality of death and grief at the cross. And really, honestly, thank God for that. Amen. Please join us as we sing, Take, O Take Me As I Am. Take, oh, take me as I am. It is time for a Holy Communion for all people. And if you have not already done so, I encourage you to get your bread, baked good, your cracker, your juice, your beverage ready and together and close to you so that we can all join in this time of Holy Communion together. Jesus Christ invites everyone to his table, to his feast of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and with your race, whatever your age, child, youth, adult, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, however many or few that may be, in the fullness of who you are, however you are, and wherever you are, you are welcome here. Please join me in our communion prayers and in the first responsive prayer. I'll say a line and then you'll say your line back to me as it appears on your screen and you can join with me in the motions too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and loving God, you created this world full of so much beauty and sorrow and called it good and called it enough. Although we feel lost at times, you are ever present. We doubt, resist, turn away and rage, insistent on our own power to pull us through and yet sure that we are to blame, making our lives into a confusing paradox. But you are so patient. You are here to meet us, reside with us, always faithful, always present in this body, the bread, and in this body, the people. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who proclaimed freedom for the bound, justice for the oppressed, grace for the lost, love for the prodigal. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, we can imagine and live into a community where all who struggle are taken into loving arms and those who struggle to love are invited into greater compassion. So in the name of Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you. Receive our prayers as we share them aloud in our hearts and in the comments. 
Loving God, we know that our fragility is not only okay, that it is necessary. We are vulnerable to the forces of life and we know that we will all die, which helps us to see and be with all who are hurting. And so we pray for all who suffer, all who need your help and healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, for the end to the war that rages in their land and over their homes and lives. We pray for President Putin's heart to turn to you and turn away from war. We pray that our nation is emboldened to pursue just priorities, global alliances, and diplomatic solutions on behalf of the whole world's safety and security. Loving God, we pray for all who are grieving. Hold them close and comfort them in this process and help us to make room for one another and hold each other in our griefs. We pray for our church, for the ministries, for our community and for our world, and we pray for ourselves in these moments of silence. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. I invite you now to pick up your bread, your baked good, your cracker, whatever you've brought with you. Join with me as we continue to pray. On the night he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down. And pick up your cup. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, loving God, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. And so remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. I invite you to lift up your hands as we pray for the Holy Spirit over your bread and your juice. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us sustenance for our days, the sacrament of love for simple and ordinary lives, fuel for justice in this world. By your Spirit, open us to one another, open us to the world, making us one in you through Christ, in the power of your amazing grace. You can put your hands down and please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that each of us has brought that we eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and empowering us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Now I invite you to pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, 
thank you for this sacrament, this meal in which you give yourself to us, feeding us through these everyday gifts of bread and juice. Send us into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, aren't you glad you joined us in worship this morning? It's always wonderful when we can join together in Holy Communion for all people. If you're looking for additional ways to put your faith into action, we have a number of opportunities coming up for you. This week, we continue to join United Methodist congregations across our nation in raising money for the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR. This annual fundraising drive is responsible for raising the entire infrastructure funding for UMCOR, so that when there is a special request for relief anywhere in the world, you know that all of that money goes directly to the project for which it's intended. You can give to this important special offering using the drop-down menu on the DAUMC online giving portal. In addition, you can bring or send your check directly to the church with UMCOR Sunday in the memo line. But there are also other local ways in which you can put your faith into action. Have you volunteered to become involved with the DAUMC Community Garden? It's a way to grow food for your own family or to help meet the needs of those in the community. You can get more information today at 11.30 a.m. when Pastor Meredith leads the Blessing of the Garden Boxes out in the DAUMC Community Garden behind the church. Then, today at 1.30 in the afternoon, there will be a Ukraine Benefit Concert. It will be held at First Presbyterian Church on the corner of 7th Street and Capitol Avenue. If you would like to help provide Easter flowers to beautify our sanctuary for Easter Sunday, orders are now being taken. For $13, you can donate a Easter lily plant or cut flowers in honor or memory of a loved one. Call the church office by this Friday, April 8th. Support for Habitat for Humanity has been a long-standing tradition at Douglas Avenue. The annual Habitat for Humanity Walk for Housing is Sunday, April 24th. It will be followed by a drive through chicken dinner. See this week's e-newsletter for complete details. And planning is underway for the annual His Home 300-mile bike ride to support the His Home Orphanage in Haiti. This trip will once again be held locally this year, traveling 50 miles over each of six days. If you'd like to ride or to sponsor a rider, please contact Aaron Emery. See the E! News for more details. Of course, none of these ministries would be possible without your dedicated support. We've tried to make it convenient to support the ministries of DAUMC. You can use our online giving portal. Simply scan the QR code on your screen. We also have automatic bill pay using your bank, ACH bank transfer using Douglas Avenue's bank, or you can simply bring a check by the church office. If you're worshiping in person this morning, you'll find handy donation boxes in the front and back of the sanctuary. While you're at it, please take a moment to fill out our online contact form. You'll find a link in the comments section of online worship and a QR code on the front of this morning's bulletin for in-person worship. Now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing, It Is Well With My Soul.
Our Lent series, Good Enough, is based on a book of devotions of the same name by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. Kate and Jessica have offered these wonderful, graceful invitations to seek alternatives to the pressure of perfectionism. And you may yet want to join in reading these daily devotions, and you are more than welcome to join in any of our small groups for debriefing and deepening your experience or conversation with others. All of the information on how to get a book, the devotional companion, and joining one of the small groups is in the e-newsletter. Friends, wherever you are in grief or in loss, know that God is right there with you. That God has shown up in person, in Jesus, to know what it is to be fully human, and that means fully human, with all of our pain and sorrows, joys and celebrations, losses, our death. God knows this intimately and bears it all with us. Beloved, you are not alone. Each worship experience during this season of a good enough Lent, we will end with a blessing from the book. And so here is a blessing for when you're in grief. Receive this blessing from when you're in grief. Blessed are you, dear, dear one, doing this holy work of suffering what must be suffered, of grieving what has been lost of knowing the unthinkable truth that must be known. This grief can make you feel on the other side of the glass from the world all around you, a force field of different realities that are separating you. Yet blessed are you in yours, for yours is the one most seen by God who breathes compassion upon you, even now. Who has walked this path and who leans toward you, gathering you up into the arms of love. Rest now, dear one. You are not alone. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I just pray this whole time has been powerful for you and meaningful for you, uplifting for you, that you will continue to join in online worship with us or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Those worship services are at 815 and 1030. Again, I encourage you to use that contact form. Let us know who you are so that we can connect with you, so that we can pray with you. Remember, there's a place there for your prayer requests that go to our pastors and prayer team. We love to be able to pray with you, and, and we really want to live life with you and be a part of your life of faith. So please do use that contact form today. And now, as you go into your day, may the God who loves all of creation, especially the grief-stricken part, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.